Let's go straight yeah. to bases. What, what do you got, got there? Yeah. Uh, well, I've got the. I know we're we're we're, we're all we're sinking up here, aren't we? Like twins. I know, yeah. Um, I've got the BB three. Is it BB three thousand? BB three thousand. I was inspired by Mr. Jonathan Marin, oh. who is a fantastic bass player. You will be. You guys watching this, I'll be hearing Jonathan today. But I was inspired um, by Jonathan, who plays or has played a BB exclusively, exclusively for years, right? And yeah. um, and it was just outrageous. In fact, I'm going to play the clip that really inspired me to get. I haven't got. I've got a bunch of clips today that we're going to be sharing. I haven't got that one. Um, organized but i'm going to get it anyway um and you're going to hear jonathan absolutely kill it on the bb but he inspired me to get this bass and i know that he inspired a lot of other players as well to oh yeah to get, absolutely to, to get the bb Same. but we're not o only going to be talking about bbs today we're going to be talking about our favorite five yes. 80s bases bases yes. from the 1980s oh i was a poet and i didn't even know it mm. um but yeah and we're kicking it off with the bb and just to put it out there this might not be the definitive list of the best bass of the 1980s. But these are the ones that we own. So they're our favorite <laughs> yeah. bass of the 1980s. That's really true. That is really true. And I, I yeah. think I have a type, like as I was pulling together some examples that are just sitting over here, I've got them in arm's reach, dude, I'm prepared. I'm prepared yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking like, oh, I definitely have, like, I don't have any color. It's so interesting. All my bases from the eighties are either black, white, or natural. And I was like, why don't I have any pink bases or like, you know, or like teal bases but i think when the chips are down i go for that like i love the 80s sound and aesthetic but i kind of like the more downplayed like color thing from then yeah. or something did, did Doug i don't McKagan know have like what's the is it a p bass special yeah he had a pink it's, one, that's right? actually called a jazz bass special jazz well, bass I, special. okay i do have that bass but you decided you didn't want that bass in the shoot did, today oh <sighs> Yeah, we only had five slots, dude. We only had five slots. It's right we're, over there. We're going to sneak it in. We're going to sneak it in. But did Duff have a pink one? I'm sure we had a pink basis. Maybe. Point. I mean, could be. Uh, I, I remember him playing pretty much only the black and white ones. Um, and, and he put stickers on them and stuff. And maybe he did have a pink one. Somebody might know. A GNR fan in the comments might be like, absolutely a pink one. And you yeah. might be right. But I think the, the jazz bass special that he was playing, that's like the PJ... I yeah. think that that thing, he just had them in black and white. But Maybe again, I, I'm just smiling because I was thinking about my youth and it was colorful. There was, you know, when I was a Guns N' Roses fan, I yeah. was having a bit of a colorful time. You know, it was it was a time of experimentation. So maybe it was white and I was just seeing pink. Who knows? <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yes. so yeah, like maybe yes. maybe that was it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, should, we, should we jump into the, yeah, to, yeah. To a few clips of the do BB? You, hey, before we do, do you just want to go through a couple of differences of this? I do. I'm asking you a leading question. I mean, Scott's got the legit, like, 80s bb 3000 it does yeah. yours just say bb 3000 that's it yeah bb 3000 okay i think that people have been sleeping on these for well i think i still think people are sleeping on them i will say that the prices have gone up though they sure have yes yeah. and i i was able to find this one which is actually called a bb 3000 a and if you're watching the pod on youtube which we would highly encourage you to do my pickups are slightly different this is an active model so it's still neck through right but it's a little later it's got a battery in it scott's is passive scott's has volume tone and a pickup switch where mine has volume blend between the pickups and then active bass and treble and i have you have flats on yours scott right flats on this yeah Flats. You were, and what you were, have you, you got on yours? I've got tapes on mine. I've got tapes. I see what you were doing. You were using the time wisely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just pressing record on. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Somebody That's left me in call. charge of the tech and I forgot to press record on Zoom. <laughs> well done. Well done. I should have reminded you. You you got it, man. We're all set. Um yeah, so two Two different base, two different models, or like uh, mine is a little later. I think late eighties. Scotts. Do you know what your year yours is? I'm not sure, man. Yours is active, isn't it? Though. Yeah, yeah it's active. It's it's called a three thousand A. You can see here on yeah. the end. I think that's correct. Yeah, BB three thousand A. And yeah. you know, I've got tapes on mine, so it's got. It's got a really smooth sound. If somebody asked you what what the kind of essence of the BB sound is, what would you say? 
I would say I almost never use it as a PJ, right? It's like blended in the center, like a PJ, it sounds like this. And, and, you know, we've talked about this, like the PJ sound on most PJs, I don't love, but when I blend almost all the way to the P pickup, it sounds a little more like a mid scooped P bass. It kind of does a thing where it like, at least this one kind of gets rid of some of this quality about P basses that I don't totally love. Like it kind of seems like it widens the bottom and the top. But does yours do that, or is yours more like mid forward? It's slightly. Um, let me. So what, this is. What, how would you describe it? I'm going to play a clip of Jonathan Marin playing it. Yeah. And then, actually, let me do that now because it was, it was this clip that really inspired me to to get the uh, to get the the BB in the first place. I, I heard this clip and it, I was just like, oh my lord, that might be. The greatest bass sound. I'm I'm not even kidding you. I, I was like, this might be the greatest bass sound I've ever heard. And if yeah. I can only have that bass tone, I yeah. can die happy. Yeah. Oh. So right where he's on, got on. that. It's got a bit, on, on. you know. Like it's it's got a little bit of a uh, uh sound it to does. it when Jonathan yeah. plays it there. Um let me play this one. And this is wide open as well. Something to point out, Jonathan on that clip was wearing uh, he was he was wearing. I'm not gonna mention what he was wearing. <laughs> he was just wearing normal stuff. But he was on his bass, he had flat wounds on, and he's just playing it with the P pickup. So he doesn't he have, use it, was that flats? It's flats, yeah. Okay. Oh, Yeah. It's, and he's kind of digging in like that as well. It is, right? but yeah. it doesn't sound like a P bass. That's the really interesting thing. It does Why? not sound like a, it's the Why? mid quality. Well, well, in terms of the sound, so that's the, again, the tone right up, um, volume right up and only the P, the, the P pick up on. Yes. It's just got a yes. different mid quality to it. So it does sound different. I don't know whether one's wired in series, one's wired in parallel. If you guys are watching this and you know the answer, please, you know, comment below and let us know. But what <laughs> I will say is it's got a neck through. So it's mm. a neck through bait. It's made out of different materials, I guess. Yeah. So it's a neck through and it's got a Mikasa ebony board. But I've played P bases from Moulon, for instance, that use Macassany ebony, ebony boards, they don't sound like that. Right. They just don't sound like that. So there's something, I don't know, sorcery. Well, and, and the coils are wound the opposite of a typical P. I think, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we get this, I feel like we Ooh. get this wrong and this is forever. Uh, but but someone did tell me, and you let me know in the comments if this, if <laughs> oh. you confirm it oh. or deny oh, it. Oh, they will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, hoping you get it wrong. <laughs> yes. That a typical P pickup, right, is run in series. Each coil is run into each other. It bucks the hum. It increases the volume. The mid range comes up. It kind of takes it to this zone. Ah, ah, ah. Right? It's it yeah. sort of like covers the treble a bit, brings that mid range up. That's series, I believe. And then these bases or your passive bass, those coils are run in parallel, so uh, it has a little bit more. Um, it, it's not quite as dark and barky as a typical P bass would be. I think that's the reason. I think mm, that's what's up. And I will say this good. bass. <laughs> That doesn't sound the same. I know. And this is an active yeah. one, right? And I have tapes yeah. on it. This one is like smoother sounding. It doesn't have that same mid-range. It has a certain like barkier. bark. It's a bark, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Yes. How did you? -da 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 -da. What a great lick that was that you I just played. I have no idea. <laughs> that, was, that was so nice. Yeah, something like that. But it's a, it's your sound. It's got that beautiful, fat, active sound. Is that yeah, it? mine does. Mine does yeah. have that thing. Where actually, I don't want to bark it. Like I just want to play like big. Yeah, yeah. 
those kind of sounds, which is what I love. But just a different vibe, you know. Um, Sounds beautiful. Man. Let yeah. me let me play oh, one just because yes. I love Jonathan. I want to give Thank Jonathan you. lots of love. Right. Um, I see what's coming. Hey. Again, Maxwell Marin on bass with the BB. With the BB, and he, I believe he told me he was playing rounds on this. Oh, interesting. Like dead rounds. Oh, if I if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Jonathan, that, unfortunately, not in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, was that Marin on bass in the video? No, it was not. <laughs> no, it isn't. But hey, you know, like you, you guys might not know it, but you've also probably heard a bunch of BBs yourself. There's some great players that have also played um, BBs in the past, and we've got like a collection of to show you today. Let me just pull it up. Um, where are we? Here we go. So first, oh, this might be my favorite, man. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And, and Ian doesn't know what these are either. So check it out. Here's the first one. Oh, dude, yes. That is such a good bass line. What a killer. This bit. Yes, like the double line there. Yeah. You think Kevin Bacon did that flip right there? You think that's did Kevin Bacon that? doing all those moves? Uh, I think it is Kevin Bacon. Actually, <laughs> I think Kevin's ba Kevin Bacon's dancing. Maybe, maybe he's outshining the bass here. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think maybe you're right. Although I think that some of that was a stunt double, but Let's I don't know. Again. Let's have a look again. <laughs> bacon, obviously. Bacon, yes, this is bacon. But that... Bass run. <laughs> I think this is not Kevin Bacon. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. Look, I'm, I love Kevin Bacon, dude. I follow him on Instagram. He's got dude. goats. Just leave him out of it. Leave him out of it. <laughs> you, you I freaking love Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. He plays guitar. He sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Anyway, you leave him it's, alone. it's awesome, right? It's an yeah, awesome yeah. bass line. It's so and good. Does anybody know who played? Do you know who played it? Of, of course I know who played bass on this. It's the great Nathan East. And But but sometimes I forget. Absolutely. Like, man, I have slept on Nathan East. I learned this tune for a thing I did. I, that thing you're talking about where he plays. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Then he plays. That thing? Exactly, dude. Oh. Exactly. Do you oh, want to dude. watch it? So this is this is <laughs> You've got him here. playing it. Uh, this is from a thing that you did. <laughs> I'm, I'm organized, dude. Yeah, this is from a video that we recorded with Nathan um, at his place. And and he is actually playing. Well, check it out. It's not this P bass right here. It's the uh, it's the BB. Check it. Oh. So this is the Yamaha BB3000 oh, yes. from the early 80s. Yeah. And this is the Footloose bass, basically. So so uh, I'll never forget, we were on the road and we rehearsed that song almost every single day. But the good news is when we went to record it, it was just one take and uh, it was Song of the Year, Grammys. And the string spacing was a little tight for me. Yeah, and that's was. when we started working on the, um, the signature bass, but... Um, Otherwise, lots, lots of fun sessions with this bass. Can you just listen to the bass in this man's His voice? Voice. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. He's kind of there's like a there's like a sub octave on his voice. So good, isn't it? It's set. Yeah, like it's way down. It's like sessions with this bass. It's like Beautiful. way down low. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. I mean, what a what a dude. You know, obviously Eric Clapton. Kenny Loggins, so many sessions, yeah. like just a monster. And that line is killing. I wonder if he wrote that line or if that line was written by guitar player or I don't, do you know? Did he write Footloose? I have Footloose? no idea. The, the bass line it. for Footloose? I, I played it on my first pro gig. So my pr first pro gig was in a theater. And for one of the nights we had to do this, you know, movies night. 
And, right. um, and that was one of the, that was one of the tunes. And I can remember just thinking, oh, like, what is this? <laughs> like, you know, yes. I, I, and I was trying to read the thing as well. I'd never heard it. It was, you know, it was like <sighs> just before my time, but it was just an absolute killer line. And once I got it down, I really, really enjoyed playing it. And what was really interesting is when I saw him playing it, I was like, oh, it was actually done on one of those five strings. Yeah. So it was a five, the five string BB with that weird, super tight string space. Tight spacing, yes. Yeah, that yeah. BB 5000. And I think that was the, actually the first commercially made or like mass produced five, which is wild. Was it? That is yes. wild. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm spitting facts like I know, but I remember when I did the Peter Gabriel video um, for So, uh, that was mentioned um, because it wasn't just Tony Levin that played on that record. And now I'm, and, and now it's terrible because I'm forgetting the other guy that played on that record, which is, which is awful. And I regret that I brought it up because I can't remember. <laughs> God, but, but well, sleep oh, easy God. because we won't edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> but play to five. I mean, Alan. Oh, Alan. Could you see? Could Could Alan do a fact check for me? Alan, can Who you do a fact bass check on so besides Tony Levin? And tell me later. Oh God, it's coming. And then I'm going to go. Coming. Of course, right? Hey, um, oh, hang on. Yeah. Let me just pull my cans out. Who? What? Who is it? Who? Oh, what he's saying, what, he's, Alan's dodgy Yorkshire accent over there. He said, he said, what do we want to know? So who played <laughs> bass on, is it So? So by Peter Gabriel. There's so two bass players. Peter Gabriel. There's two bass players. One Tony is Tony Levin. Levin. And the other is fill in the blank. <laughs> hey, while Alan's getting this, let me share this because this, and no, this is the last of the BBs, okay? But I wanted to share it because it's just Let's so go. classic. And we're going to get burned if we don't share this one. Um Oh, oh, yes. dude. Yeah, Peter Hook. <laughs> oh. Classic sound. But check it out, right? Oh, wow, What's cool. different about his bass? Let me just see if I can rewind it a little bit. Is his a newer one? It. No, no, no. It's a check, look at the pickups. Come on, scroll down, camera. See? Yeah, yeah. So it's got the reverse P. Oh, yes. And yours doesn't, correct? No. And yours oh, doesn't. Yeah, right. so it's the reverse P on that Whoa. one. Some of the BBs, I'm not sure what the rules and regs are around which, B, B, which BBs had the reverse and which didn't, but there were certain ones that did have reverse P pickups. Um, yeah. And for me, if anybody's wondering, I'm not that into reverse P pickups. It just doesn't sound like a P bass, but there are individuals, you know, that, that love them. And to Peter Hook's sound, it's like, he's just, when I listen to Peter Hook, he's not really going after a bass sound. It's like a completely no, different thing. It's almost yeah. like a jangly guitar sound. And I was just going to say. Exactly, yeah. Like if you want to try to get that, it's yeah. pick. He's playing super hard. Right, um, and with chorus on it. And then that is so wild where he plays the B and then lets the G ring behind it. Yeah. And then then A with an A. That's so cool to me. So cool. Yeah. And if anybody's <laughs> wondering and doesn't know that's Joy Division, the band Peter Hook was, you know, a key part of was Joy Division. Yeah, and then New Order. Yes. Well, yeah, from Manchester, I think. Is that correct? Is that right? I think they're from Manchester, yeah. Don't you yeah. be asking me uh, English <laughs> trivia, bro. <laughs> oh, no. I'm useless, man. Like, <laughs> I, th I think they were from Manchester. I could be lying. Uh, okay, guess so, what? We, Alan's role. So I'm sorry. Alan has a new role. An oh, additional fact role. Checking Alan. Yeah. Did you get it, Alan? Did you get it? It was what? Larry Klein. Larry Klein, dude. Larry Thank, Klein. You, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Larry Klein. Larry Klein, I believe, played the first five string, you know, Yamaha BB 5000 on that Peter Gabriel record. I believe that's true. Um, and it sounds so cool. He does not get enough love. And I, I couldn't even remember his name. Terrible. Tony Levin gets all the love. Yeah, yeah, he was a session bass player playing that five string. I, I believe he played on. Um, 
Oh, it, never mind. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> should we, should we swap like, our bases? We've done. We've, yeah, we've given yeah. the BB some love. What's yeah. the uh, What's the next? Should we do the call it do the Kubicki dude? Should we do yeah. Kubicki? Do you have Kubicki. a Kubicki in the house? I don't have the Kubicki. Yeah, All I, I have know. is the BB. And I, I got know. in and, and I pulled up this BB and Alan said, hey man, that's, it, the BB is reflecting a little bit in the light. And I was like, dude, <laughs> this is the only 80s bass I have in the room today. I have to use this bass. Well, never fear, Scott Devine, because look at this. Look at this Testarossa oh. looking madman right here. And I know, I know where your B, I know where your Kubicki is. It is in Mr. good hands. King. With Mr. Mr. Simon King, King man. Yeah, I saw yeah. him playing it. He sounds so good on that thing, man. So cool. Um, yeah, so I've got a Kubicki here. Look at this. You guys, this is a 1988 Kubicki X Factor. One of the probably strangest, but I think most elegant body designs of the 80s. You've got tuners down here, all this proprietary stuff, yeah. right? This one is in black, but it's sort of greening out. Uh, over the years, I love that they put the logo, the factor name on the body of the base, because if I put this into shot, oh, it is, it has a headstock, Amazing. right? But it's not the typical headstock. You can see that the strings go in here, right? And then it has this really interesting situation here where, you know, when you play it uh, normally, let me see if I can just play. Oh, oh my yeah. word, that sounds amazing it's cool huge, right huge huge yeah oh my gosh i got a bunch of bottom end on it let me put some put some treble on it too this thing is like wide sounding wide, right Wide, yeah but so if i play an e now check this out i can lift this lever right oh and it drops it to d now all yeah. i do is i scooch the string out of the way this drops into a slot and now i have i've got a d then I can also fret a D sharp and I have to fret an E. So you yeah. can play in drop D, but not have to change your octave positioning. Yes. So that's the most important part because I'm sure some people were watching this or listening and thinking, well, what's wrong with you? You've got the old drop D, you know, tuner peg. That Hip you shot, just use. sure. But yeah. all of your tune, your tuning actually changes on your E string where this doesn't. This, the actual, like all of the, all of the notes stay in the same place but the low E then goes to a low D. And it's actually something that's used on uprights. So you can get uprights with extender, like upright basses with these extender keys attached yes. to the top of the headstock. It's the same thing here. So it's, for me, much more usable than than like a drop D. And just to, just to say it, I absolutely love these basses. I yeah, love man. them. They're amazing. They're so cool. There's, yep. The pickups are awesome because they're contoured with the actual yeah. strings. Yeah. The radius. So I love that. Um, the bridge is really amazing the way it works. Like they can be a little bit of a pain to restring, but yeah. they're, they're just, they're amazing. The sound obviously is amazing. The neck has one, got to be one of the most rigid necks I've ever played in my life. So it's actually Why? the- Why is yeah, that? It's because of the laminates, dude. Yeah, Can man. Can you show, show the peeps the laminates on the yeah, yeah, I don't have autofocus on this, but uh, oh, right, but yeah, okay. I'll try to just get it in shot to where like you can kind of see, you, you can almost see at the headstock here, all the stripes, all the striping in yeah. the neck. It's because there's a gazillion. I mean, I don't know how many pieces of wood, like 50 pieces of wood. I mean, I mean, I you know, I made that number up, whatever, but in the <laughs> neck, right? That, and they're all going this way, right? So they're yeah. all, I don't know, vertical, you know, but they're, they're lengthwise wise strips of wood that are all yeah. glued together to make this thing, you know, uh, the way, the way that it is. So yes, the neck is super rigid. Um, and you know, it's funny people talk about, well, you know, one piece of wood, less glue joints, Scott, I know like, you know, F base has talked about that yeah. and it's Net just so interesting as well. Yeah. Yes, that's right. We're like, oh, you know, it's better if you have less glue joints. It's just so interesting, right? There's so many ways to do it. This has like the most glue joints in the neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that neck has definitely got the most you know? glue joints, yeah. yeah. But I guess it's a completely different approach, that, isn't it? Yes. To yes. actually, yes, the philosophy is. is different. But it's just such a great instrument. The first time I first time I heard one of these being played was on, if you guys, who can remember Hot Licks? It used to be run by a guy called Arlen Roth, who was, he was the guy that tutored Ralph Macchio when oh, he was wow. playing guitar, yeah. When he was playing guitar on Crossroads, can anybody <laughs> remember Crossroads? Steve Vai, of course. Ralph yeah. Match, you know, yeah, he did Karate Kid, but that wasn't the greatest film he did. Oh, Crossroads, so, Crossroads is so yeah, great. Dude. Yes, oh, so good. Mm -hmm. 
anyway, Ralph Macchio and Al Alan Roth, he actually taught um, Ralph Macchio guitar. And um, and he had this company, which was basically kind of like SBL back in the day, but for all of the instruments. And it was called Hot Licks. They had yep. guitar players, bass players, drummers. And one of the bass players was Stu Ham. And I, oh, I dude. didn't have enough money. <laughs> this is serious. I didn't have enough money to buy any Hot Licks videos. So I just had the Hot Licks demo video <laughs> that just showed you all. <laughs> yeah, it just showed you the, the 30 VHSs. Oh, you could I love buy it. If you yeah, had right, any. <laughs> so right, I used right. to just watch the demo video of it. And I used to watch this sort of like, you know, I don't know, like 90 second or two minute clip of Stu Ham doing his thing. And yes. he had this beautiful blue oh, cubicky. The like blue burst. Yeah. It was amazing. And yes, I have, oh, I have a clip. I yeah. don't have the clip of Hot Licks. I did look for it. I couldn't find any on YouTube, but I've got a great clip of, Hell yeah. um, of Stu playing that cubicky. So let me pull that up. It's Stu sad. just had has like such a remarkable sound and approach. Yeah. Oh yes, this is so cool. Check it like, out. Like on the on that Kubicki. And he was playing this bass on that Hotlix video. You can see it's got the blue outline and the black bit in the middle. Oh, I mean, he was playing like Instagram guitar players before Instagram guitar players. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's so cool. I think Stu Ham needs more love. Actually, I think yeah, that he I know. was yeah, he was like I think a that people he was a monster, yeah, um, and he was doing stuff that nobody else was doing when he was doing it. Yeah, um, a really fantastic friend of mine called Chris said he was at Nam back in the day, and he said and he heard somebody playing sort of like this. It was, I think it was like. Oh, what, yes. this, this, this Where country he's doing thing the, that he plays, the, yeah. The like Linus and Lucy. Like Yeah. Yes. For and, sure. and he said and he, and he thought he was a guitar player, and he said he turned around and he said it was a, a bass player like tapping it. And he'd never seen that before. He was oh, like yeah. people were just like all crowded round watching Stu Ham do this yeah. thing. Because it was yeah, it was in a time that nobody had done anything like that. So I do well, think that Stu needs a lot more love. Man, and, and check this out. He was the first slap line that I ever learned too. I, I have a story of getting kicked out of my first teacher because, you no know, the, the carrot at the end of the stick was that he was going to show me Black Ice by Stu Ham, and it was in drop D and he showed it to me up here. But actually yeah. Stu on his Kubicki used his drop D lever, you know, and played it there. And it's such a, I mean, the Kubiki is such a strong flavor of a sound, you know, it's just absolutely sounds like the eighties, early nineties, like bass hero. <laughs> it's, it's so it's fun. It's the best, isn't it? Like, yeah. when Ian, Ian bought me, like I've got a Kubiki, Simon King um, is, is borrowed it from me um, to record. He actually borrowed it to record a course too. I haven't even told you the story behind it. He was recording a course for SBL yeah. and he was like, yeah. have you got a four string? That I could record this instantly, <laughs> you, as you said. Oh, like, I've like, got the bass. Hell yeah, I've, I've got you. I've got you. It's time to get this in an SPL course. Yes. So I, uh, I sent it down to. Oh no, he came up here and picked it up. So anyway, so it. Simon got the cubicle to record the course. Um, where was I? Where was I going with this? I was, what, that, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, you got me the cubicle. So Ian yeah. bought me this cubicle. You madman. And, <laughs> and and there was a point where we were in here in this room. I'm sitting in here, and we kind of like. We wanted to do like a cubic, a cubicky super group. <laughs> yeah, where, yeah, we, yeah. Where we're playing cubicies and we only play slap. <laughs> I, I still think that we should do that. Neon, we're probably wearing big ass 80s sunglasses. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. exactly that. Yeah. Both with an audience cubicies. of, with an audience of eight. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I think there's an audience. If you're watching us on YouTube, please let us in the know in the comments. Should we put together an 80s bass duo, neon design vibes? Like, just think Tron. 
if yeah. Tron and Cubicki and Slap <sighs> Bass all had a baby, I don't know, like, yeah, it's a trio, right? Menage a trois, right? <laughs> yes. They all had a baby, right? And and the band, the duo, there was that. Should we do it? Let us know in the comments. I'm all for it. Oh, I am all for it too. <sighs> also, hey, let me just give a shout out to Kubiki too, because yeah. so many people think that they're defunct and not making instruments because Philip passed away. This bass has crazy history. It was the first custom shop. Um, product that Fender made. Fender bought Kubicki. Stu Ham actually was instrumental in getting that, like making that deal happen between Kubicki and Fender. Yeah. So they made factors as part of the custom shop. And then Philip got it back and then sadly passed away a few years after that. Um, but they still, like Carlo, who's the shop manager there, still takes orders. They have a bunch of new old stock around and they're not crazy money. Like I would think like a build like this now would be eight grand and they're not that. So, you know, wow. if you want one of these, you can get the colors still pink, orange, you know, like yellow. They do this crazy yellow. Oh, I mean, maybe it's like banana base 2.0. I don't know. I'm just saying, uh, it's, it would Dude, be worth a look. Like if you see this, cubies. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, like we could. full tr can we just like contact Cubic and we we want to go full Tron. I don't know what <laughs> yeah. that even looks like, but we're going to dress like Tron. It could be that blue burst, man. I mean that Maybe, blue yeah. burst is sort of Tron vibes to me, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Uh, Anyhow, what, should, should we what's move next, on? Divine? So we, we've done the BB. Hey, yeah. and by the way, everybody, you know, for for, the, for those of you who are listening, please go over to YouTube as well. It'll be this will be on the main channel, um, and let us know what your favorite eighties bases are. We know we are only focusing on the ones that we could show you on the video today. Uh, and just to put it aside as well, like we actually really love these bases. It's you know, totally, that, and you know that's why we own them. Uh, but go over to YouTube. Let us know in the comments what are your favorite '80s bases. It would be great to see everybody doing that because you know we're going to see the cross section of different. You know what you what you guys are into. It'd be amazing to see that over on YouTube. So go let us know. Now the next base that we've got up. Ian's got his, I haven't got mine here today. I haven't done a bit of a lame job of bringing mine down, but Ian, I know that, you know, you I might got have, you, babe. you've got me, you've got a few bases at home. I got you, babe. So uh, the next one is wall. Oh, oh, you mean, Gr oh, oh, you have mean, you got wait, one? You mean, you mean, you mean a wall like this? <laughs> oh, yes, oh. absolutely. Ah, uh, this is a Mark one uh, from 1988 uh, that I was able to purchase in London off an incredible guy named Pete. Um, who had this base since it was made. So it's a single owner uh, with, it's Wenge, right? So it's the Wende, Wenge front and back mahogany core, 1988. Yeah. And it's who, incredible. Who are the wall players? Like, and I've got two great clips to sh show you guys as well. In fact, let me share one and then I'll share the other in just a second. Great. But this first one is um, somebody that, People kind of sleep on when it comes to not only bass playing, but, oh, dude. But, but yeah, but also they sleep on him when it comes to um, playing not only walls, but playing bass as well. So check this out. Yeah. Uh, come on. Now, this Obviously. is different to yours. This is the Mark II wall, isn't Mark it? Mark II. And is it a five? It's a five, It Scott. is a five. Jeez, oh. uh, dude. Oh, his bands have always been phenomenal. Yeah. Listen to this band. So good. So, like, ah, uh, like. Just to tell you a quick story, when I first moved to Leeds, there was a great bass player called Rich Hammond that lives here in... B in um, there is a, another, another Rich Hammond that does Top Gear. And actually, there's another Rich Hammond <laughs> yes. that does play bass in New York. But this is the Leeds Rich Hammond, who's a phenomenal player. I mean, I got a couple of lessons when I moved to Leeds with Rich. Um, and he was into like Richard Bonner and Jacko and Lincoln yep. Goins and like, you know, the, the obvious super bass players. Yep. Um, and he went to see uh, Paul McCartney live. And I can remember see, like meeting him the, the week after for a pint in town. 
and and he said that Richard bon, um, that Paul McCartney was the best bass player he'd ever seen live. Wow! That, wow! Yeah. That's cool. It was really interesting because he was into all of this, this, the uber bass players. And I was like, well, what was it about Paul McCartney? And he said, his feel is just mm. incredible. Yeah, his like his feel time is, feel. His time yeah. feel is incredible. Yeah, and it was really surprising. And after that, I kind of did a deep dive into Paul McCartney, you know, checked out his bass lines. We've done YouTube videos on him oh, before. Yeah. He's so good. He's oh, incredible. He's yeah. incredible, of course, yeah. yes. I mean, you know, and he had that wall in that era. Yeah. Where it's oh, this is this is a little too hot. The pickups on this thing are absolutely beastly. That bass right? sounds incredible. It really does. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna just turn it down even a little more. Right? I mean, that sound. It's so. But yeah. the the wall players too. I mean, obviously, there's Mick Karn. Uh, there's Percy Jones. We've talked about him. There's Getty Lee. Get um, you Flea. know, Blood Sugar Sex Flea, Magic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's just something about these bases that they're very, they're immediate. Just in they're Chancellor like, Tool. Like oh, this. Yes, yes, yeah. right. Like the, like. Yeah. There's something about the high end of them, you know, and when Getty would play them too. And he would attack like that. They yeah. just have this like absolute immediate punch that comes right at you. And boy, it's such a, it's really a cool bass to play um yeah and do you have any do you have any more clips I've got there one, i've got one clip i've got a clip of um of not of mick khan actually i was gonna i was gonna show mick khan khan but there's not that many great clips of him online but i've got a great um percy jones clip of him playing oh, with yeah. phil collins a little That's little cool. ditty about phil collins i'll just share in a minute but just to just to point it out as well if you haven't seen a wall bass the thing that makes them different oh right uh, it's Thank predominantly you. the pickups it's the pickups yes. and the circuitry um, obviously huge, big pickups on that thing. Yep. Um, and then the circuit is wacky. Yeah. It really takes some getting used to, uh, so but check it out. Do, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, low pass filters instead of a tone control. So listen, you can take, remove all of the high end. And now it's just a submachine. If you pull up on the knob, it creates almost like a wah effect. Yeah. So you can get really kind of barky as I'm just peaking everything because this bass is so hot. But the tone controls are just absolutely wild. You can blend that stuff, right? Right now I'm just on the bridge or uh, I'm on the bass pickup. So I, the the neck pickup, they say B and T. It's like bass and bass treble, and treble isn't right? It, yeah. Just to show you that. I mean, what a wild <laughs> sound that yeah, is. Yeah, and they've got right? like pick attack where you can, oh, where you can yeah. pull up on the tone con well, not the tone controls, but you can pull up on the controls yeah, and get yeah. a slight edge to it. So check that out. Pull up on pick attack. Right? It does exactly what he says it on does. the tin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's Mega. so cool. Let me share this um, Percy Jones clip because it's super cool. And again, it's I wanted to share this one because a lot of people don't know that Phil Collins, before he was Phil Collins and before he was doing the whole Genesis thing, he was actually in the English version of, you know, Weather Report. It was it was called Brand X. It was, you know, I think that they um it was around the same time as Weather Report with Jacko and, you know, all of that scene that was going on. But instead of Jacko, they had Percy Jones, who was an absolutely phenomenal bass player. And he he started out um, playing in Brand X with a Wall Mark. I know it's not a Mark One. What's it called? No, it's, I think it's a one, Pro. It? It's I believe a pro, it's a, it? a Wall yeah. Pro. Yeah, check this um, out with that big pick guard on it. And check out Phil Phil Collins playing drums. It's awesome. Singing too, man. Oh yeah. Come on. Look how young he is. Oh. That's Percy. Playing fretless. This is oh. in 79. We were just but one year yeah. old, dude.
Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's awesome, isn't it? It's so oh. cool. Yeah. And that Percy Jones thing or like Mick Karn thing, it sounds like bridge pickup vibe to me. Yeah. I think he only, does he only have one pickup on that bass? Oh, let does me, he? Let me see. Shoot, maybe. Yeah, could be. Um, let me just see. <laughs> let me just, share my screen. Me, uh, I don't think there's any shots of him, actually. I don't think there's any shots of him. Maybe. Who knows? We'll, we'll never know. Or maybe we will know because somebody will tell us in the comments. <laughs> yeah. If there's just something know, about these. There's something about the bridge pickup. It's so like barky and cool. Well, they're right back against the bridge as well. Yeah. You know, they're right back. If you look at like that on the BB, I would guess that that's in 70s position. Right. For the bridge. It looks f further back to me than 60s. Like, and this is like in... Exactly. This is an 80s position. <laughs> 80s like, position, dude. Yeah, yeah hammered right. against the bridge. Yeah. Now, segue, segue. Let's Do you go. know another bass that has the bridge pickup tight? against oh, the uh well done against the bridge well done divine i sure do <laughs> and i happen to have it right oh god dude right here oh yes <laughs> outrageous <laughs> look at this thing yeah no ken hey smith. This, ken smith man this is a bt6 wide i don't know why on earth i bought this instrument because the neck is like especially wide <laughs> uh, <laughs> like but it is absolutely outrageous. Now, this is not an, one from the 80s. I have a four-string from the 80s, but this four-string Ken Smith from the 80s, but this one felt more apropos to the clip that Scott's going to show. This instrument is just wild. Um, big, big bass, a lot of wood going on here. It's hefty, and they have a very particular sound. You want to you wanna take us through it? Yeah, and I think one of the things to point out about Ken Smith as well, especially in the 80s, is that they were just everywhere. They were so yes. popular, um, especially in, you know, in the session world. I can remember having a conversation with Ricky Minor, who was, you know, like Ricky Minor. What did he do? Pop I um, American Idol, right? He was the MD for American Idol. Yeah, but, and Whitney you know, Houston. And but he was like the MD for Whitney Houston mm -hmm. and this slew of artists. And I can remember having this conversation about Ken Smith and he was saying, oh, it was the bass to yes. use in, like he said that you turn up to a studio and they expected you to have a Ken Smith. <laughs> Um, right. almost, almost like what P, you know, we, we talk about that with P basses now, but back in the eighties, it was, it was Smith. Um, yeah, because P basses weren't cool. You know, like it, there was a time where it was like, oh, that's that old thing. And we want something bright and modern. Yeah. And we that want was to cut through the mix. That was this sound, right? That was like, exactly oh, that. hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. When I was hanging with right. Ricky Minor, I got to play the bass that he played on um, I Will Always Love You. Do you know, um, is, oh, I Will Always Love You, is that the tune, the Whitney Houston yeah, tune? Yeah, I played the bass, dude. It was wild. Oh, that I bass bet. is amazing. And you know what Smiths are like? I think that that might have been the first Smith that I ever played. They're like pianos. Like yes, they are. You play it and it's like, whoa. Even like Alan that's here. Hey, Alan, over there behind the camera. Um, we used to have this like blackout curtain in the studio and he was on one side and I was on the other side of this blackout curtain and I just got a Smith. I plugged it in and, you know, I'd played a bunch of basses in front of Alan. He never mentioned any of them. He was like, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, Alan like, plays drums. And he's like, loser, <laughs> I play drums. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, right, so I put right. this, this Ken Smith in and I played it and Alan, was, I can remember Alan was on the other side and he was like, oh, what's that? What bass are you playing? It instantly stands out. They have a yes. really certain sound about them. So they not do. only that, not only was everybody, you know, a lot of people using them in the 80s, but also Ken Smith was a pioneer of mm. the the, the uh, modern electric bass. There's so many things that he yep. did that we take for granted right now, like quick release bridge, you know, the, the quick release strings from a bridge. He did that. You know, detented, you know, the detented. Um, Here. Yeah, controls. Let's get Ken. a little detent ASMR. Are you ready? Exactly. You've got that, uh, little, that little notch <laughs> in the middle of the control. Yes, yes. Um, I think that he did the first onboard active electronics that were actually in yep. the base. There's a slew of other, uh, other things as well. Oh, the, um, do you know the inlaid uh, strap 
strap buttons here. Yeah, yep. Ken Smith. So there's did he all also do the brass did. nut, or was that before? Did he do the brass nut? Oh, maybe he I'm could have. Just, do, he could have I'm done the talking. brass nut. But I'll tell you what he did do. He was the yep. first person that made a wide neck six string. Oh, like this? The, exactly like that. There was no wide neck six string before Ken Smith, um, and it was originally designed with Anthony Jackson. I think the story goes that Anthony Jackson did something with Carl Thompson beforehand, um, mm. which was a thinner neck, so the strings were closer together. And then he teamed up with Ken Smith afterwards, and they created the first wide neck six string, just like the one that you're holding today. Except yep. I think that um, Anthony's one had a pit guard on it. In fact, I've got a, a clip of him oh. playing the Let's very go. bass. Let's go. Oh, Let fun. Let me share yes. the screen, dude. This is with Aldi, Mio Aldi Miola in 1982. Oh. Gad on drums. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Whoa! Woo! Jeez! <laughs> Dude, okay, hold on, Outrageous. hold on. Good Christ! I mean, I think that, like, first of all, Anthony Jackson might be the only bass player alive that is like that ferocious seated. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? He's like, always <laughs> sat down. Yes. Always. Yes. So many clips I see. Well, maybe because that's how he did it live. He is seated, but like the fire, right? And the tenacity that comes out of his playing, like yeah. he's not jumping around, moving around stage. It just is all, you can see it in his face and in his body language, even when he sat down. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Very would, cool. Do you know if he did the, do you know, um, what you're going to do for me, Shaka Khan? Mm -hmm. did he do, do you know if he did that on the Ken Smith or did he do I, it on the um, career? I girl? don't. You are the resident uh, uh, Anthony Jackson fan. I knew fan. this at one point. I think he did it on career girl, but career girl was his original. It was a jazz bass with a precision neck. That's um, right. I think he did it on that, but in a different tuning. Please, somebody let me know if I'm right in the comments. I've done so many videos and so many of these weird facts that they all just get mixed up into a big soup. I don't yes. know. If anybody's there, like, Scott, you you talked about this in a YouTube video. How do you not know? It's just because I've talked about so many things. <laughs> Either that or my oh, brain's just good. crap. Yeah, I think he did it on Career Girl. And then what's the the OJs as well? I wonder if he... Yeah. I think that, did, that was on Career Girl. That was Girl Career Girl. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a Ken Smith. That was pre-Ken Smith. But the thing I just wanted to... Because I have one here. Like, that Anthony Jackson thing, he's playing with a pick on that clip. And it sounds like he's got chorus on, right? And the cool yeah. thing... The cool thing about a Ken Smith is all the way from down low... Like th that's a three octave major scale in every yeah, note, yeah. right? Right? Ah. Like every note is so clear. It's just absolutely crazy. Oh, what are we, uh, we texting some folks now? We're just doing a little bit of work. <laughs> Just doing a little, <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just getting a little, getting I'm a little work done, dude. Yeah, dude. I'm just like DM some dudes. <laughs> no, I'm just actually texting some saying, "Hey, I'm gonna be. I'm running late. We, we're talking bases. I'm running late." <laughs> I mean, just the the clarity on these, like you know, and I, I won't do it with you know chorus or or uh, pick, right? So check this out. Even if I like, I'll go bridge pickup. Come on, Allison, where is it? Right, bridge pickup down low. Listen to that sound. It's like gow. Crazy. Yeah. And as you climb, right? And all these notes sound the same. Like there's the same amount of volume at that C as this C. It's really, really cool. 
Anyway, th that's what I think is really special about these. Like then, you know, if you play chords on them, right? They're just like, God, they just ring like, like pianos. It's wild. So really cool. good. Yeah. Hang on. I'm just, I'm going to see, I'm going off, I'm going off. So You're going off have, script. We, we didn't have a script. <laughs> yeah, Let yeah, me yeah. just see if. And the Cocteau Twins, please welcome Massive Attack. Oh, dude. Yes. Thank you for finding this. Turn it down a little. I think this is Winston Blisser. Oh, I dude, think he's playing his Smith. This. He is. I can see it. Was that him on bass just there? Yeah, dude. That v v v v v v No, I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Okay. Was that like in a track or something? Oh. oh. Listen to the clarity! Oh, there it is. Look at that. Yeah. For me, that Whoa. had to be done on a Smith. It's just, there's something about that track that when I hear it, it just Whoa. screams Ken Smith to me. Oh, yes. So good. Right. And, and can we it, just have a bit it, of love for that track as well? Oh, my word. Wow. Is it like... Outrageous. <laughs> yes. Exactly that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's so interesting. Like, if you just back off towards the bridge a touch, right, maybe just then bump the bass to compensate. Oh. Like, you just hear that low C. It's so clean. Yeah. But you have often said, too, that they also, like, there is this character in, like, the high mid-range or high end that starts to grate on you over it time. Does, yeah, right? it does for me sometimes, yeah. Like, um it's like a fretless, you know, you can, o you can OD on a fretless sometimes and you used to be yes. like, ah, I'm, I'm a bit done with the fretless sound. Um, at least me. Right. And I, and I find sure. that the same thing with the Ken Smith. Sometimes I'm like, you know, when you hear it in a mix, it's, it's really great. But sometimes when I'm playing it, I just like OD on the Ken Smith. I need a break or whatever. Yeah. I would love to fix that. I would love to fix that because I've got a beautiful Ken Smith at home. It's definitely a bass I geek out on way too much on reverb. It's one of the top searches. I'm always searching for Smiths. There's something about them that I think that I'll tell you what, do you know when I see a video and it's like, there's, there's a bunch of them on YouTube, whatever versus Ken Smith, right? There's yeah. That, but for me, every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh, Ken Smith wins. And oh. <laughs> you, you look in the comments, always yeah. the same story. Really? Always, it's, yeah, interesting. it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's something about the the way that it cuts in the mix. But that that clip, I'm not sure I mentioned it, is Winston Blissett on bass with Massive Attack there. He is a UK legend, just a fantastic bassist. And he's played with a bunch of artists as well. But like, ah, oh, love I'm love so it. glad you pulled that up. Because, you know, you always associate the Ken Smith with Anthony Jackson, with, you know, Patatucci, yeah, you know, yeah, Ricky yeah. Minor, like session, clean, R&B, jazz. But to see it in that context of like massive attack what what yeah. is that called is that genre called like trip hop what did they start what's massive I attack i don't know what do you it's think pop music. Like massive attack it's sort of like it's out of bristol isn't it there was a whole scene that came out of bristol and around that i'm Someone's not sure what know. it's called massive attack somebody will know I, and i'll Man. see it and i'll be like oh that was obvious it was that thing um the Bristol mm. sound. I'll call it that. <laughs> well, it's cool to see that, like that bass show up. I love seeing stuff that feel like a little bit of a cognitive dissonance. Like you'd think maybe that guy would be playing, I don't know, anything other than a Smith, yeah. but it had such a, what a vibe, you know? It just and instead of getting everything. it with pedals or instead of it as synth bass, that the Smith almost sort of just sounds like a synth bass. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> you know, yeah. It really sounds cool. so good. Yeah. Hey, dude, so cool. check it out. This is one for you. Let's go. Thank you, Divine. Oh. I mean, you made me try to get this sound yeah. without a specter. On that video, on that SPL video. Uh, Just Alice classic, Chains, classic. The great Mike Starr, RIP, man. 
playing an NS2, like a Kramer era 80s NS2. Keep it let's going. Go, oh, never let's mind. Go one more time, dude. Yeah, let's have <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. The Listen front that. end on that note. You just know that he's got that thing that's slung low because he's got yes. the attack against the, the pick against the strings. Just yes. sounds beautiful. And if I pull this up, you know, no amp emulation, nothing. Oh, it's too loud, Allison. Come so on, what is that? Is he playing a four string? Is it five string? Is yeah, it, sorry. Is it detuned I, or what's right. going on there? Okay, great call. It, what he's playing is an NS2 from the uh, probably the mid to late 80s when they were made by Kramer. Stuart Spector sold the license to Kramer. They made him. That is sort of a golden era. The Brooklyn era, the early 80s stuff that Stuart made, and then the mid to late 80s stuff is considered like some of the golden era mm. Spector. Um, here's, here's the deal. That cool curved body that Ned Stein Steinberger helped out with. Yeah. And then you've got reverse P pickup PJ EMGs that are connected to this really cool preamp called a has right now. This is not an eighties one. This one was made um, after Stuart got his name back. Uh, this was made in 2013. So this is 11 years old, but the cool thing about these bases is just blended in the center. They don't sound like a typical, they don't sound like a typical PJ. <sighs> They have a huge, powerful sound. It's crazy. That's like yeah. overloading my stuff. Hold on. Let me see if I can. There we go. He's a half step down, so I did that too. But there's something about the R uh, of that, right? That's not typical PJ. Beautiful. So, yeah, and you've talked about this before. Like, the, really, this thing with Mike Starr is the scrape. Yeah. And you can boost bass and treble. Dude, Actually, that like, might be closer. That tone for me yeah. is the, that's the PJ. You know, if somebody was like, well, there's lots of different PJ tone, like different play, like, you know, like Victor Wooten plays a PJ. Right. The, the, but when I listen to a PJ, I always, I'm sorry, all PJ players. I'm always like, eh. When, eh when I know, both, same. When both pickups are on, I'm always like, eh. It's not as good as a jazz bass with both right. pickups on. That's I the, agree. And I know that they do different things with a PJ. You can get a P bass sound great. You can get a bridge bridge mm -hmm. sound like on a jazz great. But yep. you can't get the jazz sound. And I just A, B them. I prefer the jazz bass both pickups on versus the PJ both pickups on. Yep. Except for this. Like that yeah, sound I know. is like... It's like iconic. <laughs> it is iconic. And we've yeah. heard it a million places. And I had too many Spectre references for today. But another one to just show you, and people don't associate this with Flea, but Flea played. <laughs> like he played, that's a half step too low, but he played uh, higher ground on a Spectre. Uh, and yeah. it's just, it, it just makes you want to like, hit it <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean like yeah, yeah. that sound just makes you want to so gonky and cool I, I love it i love it a lot there's just something really interesting about the mid range isn't there it's like the yeah. mid and the top have this sort of like super unique character yeah Damn, right. i love it i know me too me too do you have do you have another clip in there for me or I, did, we I was paused i was pausing because i was wondering <laughs> you know are we gonna go there we can go there check it out so this is uh our last clip of the day Oh, and, uh, thank you for showing this. Yeah, and we're going to go with uh, we're going to go with some a beautiful man. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a we were watching. Man. We were watching this earlier. We should have been like listening to his bass playing, but we we're like, God damn, this guy's sexy. Oh, I mean, this is <laughs> this made everybody want to do a lot of things. One of those things is buy an NS two. <laughs> <laughs> but was there were like, other things too. Was this something to do with the? Uh, was what was was it something to do with Flash Gordon? This because because he looked like his like, outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Have you watched Flash Gordon? Uh, yes, absolutely. He does have a Flash Gordon vibe. Oh, look at this guy! Come on. Listen to that bass. Spectre NS2. Come on. Oh. Uh. Dude. 
It's so good, isn't it? It's so good. You can hear that mid content there as well. You can. EMGs. Yeah, I love all that stuff. Love it. Oh my god. And it's funny, man. I was talking to the guys at Spectre. <laughs> And they would love, they would love to get another Spectre in his hands. I think he only played that NS2 on that tour, but that right there is my favorite Sting bass tone of all time. I mean, yeah. I love Fender. Hey, hey, do I love it? I do. I'm a Fender fanboy, but my favorite sound that Sting has ever had is that sound. I think it's the most iconic. I think it sounds so cool on that police material, and I wish he'd play a Spectre again. Yeah. See, if you're listening, Mr. Sting, <laughs> yeah. pop out Sting. the PJ, dude. Pop out the Spectre. <laughs> Let's We're go. here for it. The bass community is here for you. <laughs> we, we have to hear it. We, we want it back. Yeah. It'd be amazing. Okay, dude. Let's call it. It's been amazing. great. Amazing. Yeah. What if if you're here at the end of the video, thank you so much. You get the the true base geek badge if you made it to the end of this one. We'll send right. it to you in the post. Um <laughs> we freaking appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening to these videos. We're gonna be doing way more. We're gonna be putting them on the main channel as well, the main YouTube channel. So definitely go start checking them out over there. And uh, yeah, and we'll catch you in the next one. And make sure you leave a comment as well down below. If you've loved this, you know, this format here where we're just, you know, geeking out over basses, let us know. Do you want like one on the 90s basses, 70s basses? Oh, wow. Fun. I don't know, basses of the 2000s. Like, let us mm. know your ideas down below. Then we can go through them comments and we can make that content for you. Have you, gonna, anything, gonna... <laughs> have you got anything to leave with, with, with Ian? <laughs> uh, hey, hit us with a rating. Yeah. Leave a comment. <laughs> like and subscribe that's all i got i just want to go play this bass some more so we'll see you on the next one everybody awesome dudes take it easy bye